Hey folks, it's Ridgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Boulder Canyon here in Farming Simulator 19. You may notice that I'm a little bit croaky this week. I have a cold. Uh, so there's not a lot that we can do about that, so we'll just have to try and ignore it and carry on. So what I'd like to do today is I want to carry on doing some slicing and dicing of trees. And once I've sliced and diced enough trees, we are going to pick them all up. We're going to sell them. And then we've got a few other bits that we want to do. We're going to clear an area here and we're going to put down a water source. Now, I've been told that the water sources that I was looking at, um, they don't actually have water on them to start with. You place them down on the ground and then you've got to use the terraforming uh, ability, the, the thing, the feature. And you've got to dig a little hole in order for the water to be able to be accessed. Now, I had no idea about this. I didn't know that this was actually a thing. Um, so, I think this is really cool. I really like this idea that we've, we've got to go and do it like that. So, that's something that we will be doing. Um, we want to get enough money now to be able to get sheep. Some people have expressed concern about us getting sheep and that we should wait a bit because they could be quite expensive and that perhaps we'd be better off getting something else first. Uh, but we did say that sheep was going to be one of the early things that we're going to get. And yes, it does take a while to earn back the initial investment in the sheep, but they do start to accumulate. You get the sheep there into the map and the wool starts building up. So it should be there. It, it will start to accumulate over time. Um, something else is that people said that the prices were supposed to be plus 50%. And you're a bit concerned that we don't have plus 50% prices. And I'm looking at this. Um, they seem to be plus 50%. I'm not really 100% sure. And I'm sort of looking like the wool right there. See, I've got a um, an app. Well, not an app. I've, I've got like a, a little uh, price comparison chart that I can use. And I'm looking at things like barley there is up to 468 at the moment. Um, and this price comparison thing that I'm looking at is saying that barley, about the best price you can hope for, is about 380 uh, oats right there, 960, and this one is giving me the best price I could hope for, really, with oats being, let me have a look along, the 400. Okay, that doesn't seem quite right. That might be old prices or something, I'm not quite sure. Uh, let's have a look at sunflowers, best price is about 800, and I've got 1200 on there. It does seem to be right. And then looking at silage, silage is a little bit more difficult to find some prices for because people keep um, using the prices that you get from the BGA, which is those prices are altogether different than what you get from the barn. Um, somewhere between 116 and 320 it's giving for silage. So I think maybe when we sold our silage bales, we did actually sell them for... Uh, quite a bit lower than we could have got. But it does look like we have the plus 50% on our prices here. Eggs right there, 2,000 per 1,000 litres, which is really good. And wool at almost 1,000 per 1,000 litres. Now, that's not a huge amount of money, admittedly. And this is what some people have expressed a bit of concern with. The amount of money that we're going to get for our wool is not particularly great. And therefore... We're going to, well, we're not going to make a vast amount of money back from our sheep, and maybe we'd be better off spending that money elsewhere. I've considered this. I have, uh, I, I have, you know, given it some due thought and consideration, and I still think that sheep is the way to go to start with. We did say that we were going to do that, and the small sheep pasture is 65,000. We got everything else that we need. We can go and we can mow a bit and we can do a bale. And then we can drop a bale in. And we just need to get the water. We just need to get the water as well. So we'd be able to buy some sheep and we can put the sheep in there. Uh, we've got... Uh, we'll, we'll be able to go and get the pallets as well. We can get uh, maybe two pallets. 
for the 10,000 litre ones. I think that I think it will work out well. Something else that I've done is I've gone and got the allow cultivators to create fields mod that is now active on the map, which means that I can go and get not that one that require not that one that requires 400. That one's five. It's getting higher. It's it's getting worse. Um, that one's 130 horsepower. I could use that one 3.7 meters wide, and if you have a look at it. It's not really chisel plow style, though, is it? This one is, though. This is a chisel plow. That could be a cultivator or it could be a traditional US style chisel plow at three meters wide, requiring 120 horsepower to pull it. This could be perfect for actually going and creating a new field. So I'm thinking that we might use that um, because this is a suggestion that several people have made, is that I should do something along these lines. I mean, both of these are three meters, so I could use this one here. Again, it looks a bit more like a chisel plow than a, a cultivator. So three meters wide, requiring 100 horsepower, we could use that to create our new field over the other side and do all of our cutting. So I'm, I'm seriously considering using that, um rather than using an actual traditional style plow uh, because quite a few people last week suggested this is what we should be doing because you know we're here in the US and the US the chisel plow is a much more common style of you know plowing of any kind now the other thing that I want to do this week is I want to ask you a weekly question because I didn't ask you one last week or the week before when I asked you the last weekly question, we decided on what animal pens we were going to have on the map. And the question returns the answer that we were going to have one large animal pen of each type of animal on the map. And then that would be our sort of completion uh, qualification. In order to be able to complete the map, we've got to have one large animal pen on the map. However, I had a massive number of comments around this idea. Um suggesting that this shouldn't be the case and that we should actually have a bit of variation on this um, because some of them are a lot easier to get than others and so I've sort of you know taken those comments into consideration and this week's weekly question is quite simple do we go for the original plan of one large pen of each type of animal so that is we're not doing horses on this map uh, so that will be one large pen of chickens, one large pen of cows, and one large pen of pigs, and one large pen of sheep. So one large pen of each. Or do we go for a large pen of pigs and a large pen of cows, but two large pens of both sheep and chickens? Because this was the big thing that a lot of people suggested, was that because sheep and chickens are so much easier, I should get more of them. So... And we can always go for more than that, but so this is the minimum number required in order to finish the map. So what I'm asking is, do you want me to have more just the original plan, which was one large pen of each? Or should we get two large pens of chickens and two large pens of sheep? And then the originally planned one large pen each of cattle and pigs. So it's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below, let us know which one you want and why, and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. So we're going to finish cutting down all the trees in this little section over here. And then once we've cut down this little section over here, if we've got enough room to put, uh, well if we get enough money from it for a start, I don't know if we will get enough money from it, but if we do, then uh, we will seriously consider putting a sheep pen over on this side rather than over the other side. Right, rather than over the other side of the barn. I'm still getting people expressing concern that we are going to run out of land too soon. Right, at the moment, our land is all of this area up here. Okay, we've got loads of land. So don't worry about the land. We can have a look in here. If I select grass type like that, and then I go to growth, that's the area that we cut. Okay, we've cut a little bit more. We've cut this area here. That's as much as we've done. Is that little bit there. We've got trees covering this entire section all the way up here, right? That's all of our land there. 
we are not going to run out of land anytime soon, okay? So don't worry about the land. We are not running out anytime soon. We have got absolutely loads of land available. And we aren't going to be running out of trees and a supply of cash anytime soon with all of that land available. So we can go for the sheep. We're not going to have to make sure that we get the, um, the arable stuff up and running immediately. What I'd like to do once I've got the... Um, the sheep on is I do want to go and get the cultivator fairly soon after and I want to be able to plant, uh, plow up and plant the, the new piece of land. Having the cultivator to do that rather than having a standard plow, I'm really liking this idea and also, you know, I, I, I like the fact that the, that type of plow does fit this, um, you know, it fits the US style map that we're on and... I mean, I don't know what it would be like converting original grassland to make this work, but I think it could. I, I think it's going to be something that would be pretty good. Um, let's just wait for that one to move. Drop you down there. Um, so, yeah, I do think that this could... I, I think that this would be a good idea. I think we've got sort of the right one. We could put the sheep pen over here, over this side, for now. And that will leave the area that we've got over the other side. We can do all of that. We can do it, plough it all up, but then do it for grass. We just do it for grass. So all we've got to do is we've got to get fertilizer on that piece. But we don't need to worry about getting any uh, lime down on it. Because lime makes no difference whatsoever. It's been tested. Patrio Graysmark has done some testing on that for me. Um, and I think someone else did some testing on it as well. But he's done as extensive testing and has found that even though the game itself is saying that lime is required on the field, when it comes to grass yields, there is absolutely no noticeable difference in grass yields whatsoever when you have uh, lime applied and when you don't have lime applied. It, it makes zero difference to it whatsoever, even if the game is telling you that lime is required on it. So we can plow that bit up, it'll tell us that lime is required, but it's not actually going to be needed, which is good. I like this. I think this is great. Right, let's chop that bit off there, and then we can come down through here and make a few slices as we go. I'll make a slice right there. You do want to try and get these ones into four logs if you can, because that's what the, um, the Ponzi Scorpion does in eight meter lengths. It does cut them into eight meter lengths and it gets exactly four so we've got a little cluster of trees right in the middle as soon as we've removed this little cluster we are good to go and get our right that's that's, that's not playing ball to cut it this way i think there we go there we go um yeah we'll go and get the um the logging trailer and we will start Removing all of this lot. Let's just move that in there. There we go. Um, taking them off and selling them. If we can get those sheep done, that would be absolutely brilliant. It's not going to take much for us to go and get a little bit of uh, food for them to start with. We can very quickly make one bale of grass and uh, drop that in for them. That's, that's not going to be any kind of issue. And then... That one bale of grass, I'm hoping, because we, we're not going to be able to afford many sheep to start with. So I'm hoping that one bale of grass would be sufficient to keep them going until such time as we are, um, we've got the land ploughed up and we've got the next bit sort of ready to roll. At least that's what I'm hoping. How big is that tree there? I don't think it's that big, actually. Um, it looks quite big, but I don't think it's that long. We'll find out in a minute. Okay. I misspoke. It's a big tree. It's a very big tree. Yeah, all the way over to there. It's a good job that I felled it where I did, because otherwise it could have gone out onto the road. And if it goes out onto the road, you can't cut it. That's the really frustrating thing about these trees, is you can't cut them when they land on the road. Because it's on someone else's land, you're not allowed to do anything in this game on someone else's land. And it does get a little bit frustrating sometimes. Let's chop you down there. And bring you over. Chop you down through. We're almost done now. Right, if I can get this next one to land on that tree, it'll push it over. 
That's what we want. Take that one over as well. Are you going to fall and knock over the first tree? No. You're going to go right beside it. Your branches brushed it, but you're not actually going to fell the tree. It's not very helpful. It's not very helpful at all, actually. I've missed a piece there. Over it like that. There, and again. And then we can carry on up through it. I'm missing a lot on this one. He does this every now and then. You get, like, one tree that doesn't, like, want to play properly. And it, it keeps missing bits. Like that there, look. It's extremely frustrating. I have to keep stopping to cough. Because of this cold. Cold's are uh, the single greatest bane of my life. Mainly because... I didn't normally get very many colds. I didn't used to get that many colds, especially with working outside all the time. The, the cold weather would kill them off. Because I work indoors now, you see, you, you're more prone to catching colds if you work in an enclosed environment. Because the the bugs from cold, they don't they don't have anywhere to like run away. They, they don't have anywhere to escape, so then you're more likely to get affected by them. Um, but also, I now have kids in school. And they go to school. They meet all these hundreds, if not thousands, of other people. And they share all of these wonderful germs. And then they all catch colds. And then they bring them all home. And then they share them with me. When you've only got to work with a set number of people, it's a lot easier, right? Because you all sort of build up an immunity to each other's germs and colds and so on. And that's it. But when you've got like a thousand students in one school and a hundred you know a few hundred in another school with a couple of children uh that all of those germs that they tend to mutate and then you get new versions of the same cold and you know and then and and then you pick them up so i now seem to get three or four colds a year which is great and all no the cold itself doesn't bother me particularly it's just an absolute jolly nuisance because being a YouTuber, having a cold is probably the worst one that I could get. If I was to break my leg, that wouldn't stop me at all from making videos. I mean, yes, admittedly it might be difficult to use my pedals for a, a, a day or two, but it wouldn't really get in the way of very much else. Having a cold, whilst it doesn't stop you from doing just about every job there is, apart from, you know, possibly being a nurse or you know studying microbiology um that 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 kind of thing um you know anything that does require you to be quite healthy um it's it's it, having a cold is is probably the most inconvenient illness that i could get and now i seem to get the colds i if it was something else maybe, maybe i could have a cold that didn't like affect me and make me cough and also affect my voice it's, it's the affecting my voice that's the problem it's, it's a jolly nuisance. It really is. Right. There's enough of me complaining and sounding like I'm feeling sorry for myself because I don't like people feeling sorry for themselves. Um, I've always been told that if you want sympathy, you probably don't deserve the sympathy. And if you don't want sympathy, then chances are you might... Well, you may deserve it, but you don't want it, so you, you shouldn't have it. Um... This is not always the case, you know, sometimes people do want sympathy and, and you know, it, it, it's deserved. Um, I, I have since found out not everything is black and white. This is, this is one thing that I have found. As I've gotten older, not everything is black and white. It's very, very easy to have everything in black and white when you're young and idealistic. But as you get older, you quickly realise that life is not made up of black and white. There's very, very little in life that is actually black and white. Almost everything is just uh, various convoluted shades of grey. And that generally does make life a little bit more complicated. You, you don't have a, a simple yes or no for everything. Everything is various shades of grey. And what you thought was a really simple, uh, plain, easy to solve kind of situation turns out not to be such. It's, um, it's just another shade of grey. And this does tend to make things rather difficult it really does but th this is all part of the whole being an adult um horror story that is being an adult i would urge each and every one of you to be like peter pan and don't be in a great 
tearing hurry to grow up. There are bonuses, it's got to be said, right? Um, chocolate cake for breakfast. Anybody who's under 18 has probably been told that you cannot have chocolate cake for breakfast. I'm here to tell you, at the ripe old age of 38, now that I've had my birthday week, um, there's actually no law on this whatsoever. There is nobody controlling or policing this. If you wish to have chocolate cake for breakfast, you can have chocolate cake for breakfast. So, it, you know, there are bonuses to being an adult. There are definitely bonuses to being an adult. You can have chocolate cake for breakfast. Uh, I'm, I'm not really a fan of cake, but um, I, I tend to take this on to a whole different level. Uh, I have pizza for breakfast. Cold pizza for breakfast. Nobody has ever told me that I cannot have cold pizza for breakfast. I mean, yes, my wife has told me I'm disgusting, um, and, and, and she's just sort of looked at me as, as though I'm some sort of pond-dwelling scum, um, but that's because she doesn't like cold pizza. I give her the same look when she eats anything with onions in it. It's, it's my right, my prerogative as her other half to try to annoy her as much as possible. So whenever she eats onions, I tell her she stinks. And that's just a, a sign of a healthy relationship. And also, I make sure I do it when she can't actually throw things at me and hurt me. Usually when she's got said onion dish in her hand, because she's not going to want to waste them. So, yeah. Um, but that's, that's another part of being an adult. Uh, fighting with your significant other. N not mean fighting, by the way. I'm, I mean, like, um, play fighting. It's fun. It's lots of fun. Uh, so anyway, um, yes, we've got, uh, what was I saying? Yes, being an adult. Being an adult. If, if you, you, you know, th there are bonuses to being an adult, such as having chocolate cake or cold pizza for breakfast. Uh, but, generally speaking, people expect you to grow up and, and act mature. Uh, what? No, I don't want to do that. That's the furthest thing from my mind. Why would you want to grow? Growing up is really dull, right? I, I, I'm asked fairly regularly. I, I, I was, you know, as, as a child, and everybody watching will either be able to immediately relate to this or be able to remember that this is what it used to be like. Um, you are such and such an age now. It's time you learn to grow up. I've heard this. I used to hear this. I used to hear this a lot. And then... You know, you, you kind of reach 18, 19, and, and you start getting... Well, isn't it about the time you grew up now? And I'd have thought you'd have gotten bored with that and start, you know, acting a little bit more grown up now. No! I'm not going to, right? I'm not going to get bored with playing computer games and eating chocolate... Well, eating cold pizza for breakfast. It's just not going to happen. Uh, so, yes, I'm here to tell you that growing up is optional. Grow old. Growing old is essential, right? Growing old is there's nothing you can do about that. But growing up, I can promise you that that bit is entirely optional and I am exercising my right to not do it. And I will continue to exercise my right to not do it for as long as I can possibly get away with it. Which I suspect will be until I'm probably on my deathbed. That's, that's what I'm guessing. I'm, I'm going to tell childish jokes on my deathbed. I am never going to grow up. Not properly. Not not completely. I will never grow up. Right. We have sliced all the trees that I want to slice. We've also cut a few back over this way because I want to be able to put a track in here. If we're going to put the sheep into the back part of this pen here, then yes, we definitely want to open it up there so that we've got a track that will come through. I'm going to leave those two trees behind. I do want some tree cover here and there. I'm not going to cut every single tree down on the map. And some people said that I should put this water feature down uh, around the rocks over on this side. And then other people suggested that I should put the water feature down over under that rock over there and do a little dip underneath it. And so have the water feature coming out of that one, sort of like a spring. Uh, because of how the water feature actually works, the way that it's... Um... Right, if we do that, that's, that's all of it now. So let's go and have a quick look at this water feature because I don't, I, di I didn't know that it did this. I didn't know that it, you know, just put a thing down and then you sculpted the water afterwards. So we want the small one like that. 
you pl you apparently you place this down on the ground and then you dig a pit afterwards. Now it's not going on that, but I could put that right around here. If we come over this side, right, I, I could kind of place it underneath his rock like that and then dig a little bit out underneath it to have a water feature right there. Uh, the other suggestion was that I place it over by our big stone over this side. We keep these trees, keep those in place, and spin around over here and put it right under there, like that. But I need to, I'm going to need to lower that down. This is low as it would go. I'll bring that down that way, maybe. So I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to place that there. Now, this is the problem, see? I've, I've placed it. It doesn't look right. It costs 250. So we've got a little bit of water below the rock. So maybe I need to move that up a little bit. But honestly, that doesn't look quite right. The, the, the water plane on there. See the way it's sticking out? Yeah. It kind of looks good. But with the edge of the water here, I think we'd need to sculpt the water up. A bit. I mean, I like the idea. We've... we've having this in here. This this does look quite cool. I do like this idea, but I'm not sure that this one's the right one. So what we'll, we'll sell that one then. We'll just go to garage. We'll get rid of that. There. Uh, yes, sell. Right, so we've gotten rid of that one. And then I wanna, we have got the 150% selling station. So I want to go back into here. And I want to go to water station there. So it hasn't removed the grass or anything on there. So, yeah, maybe we do want to put this water point over here onto this one. So we want to spin right round. All the way round like this. And we're going to place this one as far underneath that rock as we can, I think. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Like that. And then... I can't raise it or lower it at all here, but that's, that's as close as I can get to it. I can bring it down. Actually, I think bringing it down that way might be better. If we sort of put it out to about there. Right, I think that there is as low as it's going to get. So let's try putting it there. And then we need to go and have a look. So let's let's run over and we will take a look. We've got six o'clock in the evening now. We've got two hours. So we've got enough time to get our tractor and get the um get some of the other stuff loaded up. A few people have said that we should be upgrading our tractor engine and keeping using that one. Uh some people are suggesting that it's probably time that we do seriously consider moving our track, you know, sort of upgrading our tractor, moving on from that one. So you can see we've got the pond weed in here. Definitely got the pond weed, but I don't see any other bits here. This is actually quite a cool thing. So we'll use now. We get rid of that tree. That one can go because that's going to be otherwise it's going to be sort of be in the middle of the pond. So we'll chop that tree down as the last tree to come down. And then we're going to do just a little bit of landscaping just around the uh, weed just to get rid of the last of it um, so that we got somewhere that we can back a water trailer in ready for our sheep so this we're gonna need a water trailer for the sheep and we're gonna need not much else that's gonna be about it we're not gonna have time to move any timber today it's gonna have to be the first thing that we do in our next episode we do have time just to finish this one we'll take you off of there, like that. Right, so now I'll come over to here and we will just do a little bit of landscaping right in here. So what I want to do is I want to just do that around where the weed is. I don't want to do very much more. It's just a little patch around there like that. And then go to there. Uh, we want to lower, which is right click. So there. Not allowing me to lower it at the moment. It's letting me lower it there a little bit. So then I'll 
use the, the, the kind of flatten feature a little bit. Like that. That's as much as I can do at the moment. We've got... We'll, we'll come back to this some more later on. But at the moment, we've got a little bit of water down here. And we've got some weed there. So it looks like we've got sort of a, a bit of a, a pond right here. And I think that's going to work out quite nicely. Right. That's all we've got time for today. So my weekly question is where would you... Well, what animals would you like me to get on the map? Uh, we said originally it was going to be one large pen of everything, but so many people have said that it shouldn't be just one large pen of everything that I'm giving you another chance to vote on this one. Do you want one large pen of everything, or do you want one large pen each of the cattle and the pigs, but two large pens each of the sheep and the chickens? It's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below, let us know which one you want and why, and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. I'm going to get the trailer hitched on ready for our next episode, and I'm going to get the front weight on the front as well. Uh, if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like, and if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me, get them to come and watch as well, that would be awesome. And until next time... Thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.